welcome all of you today we are in this very special episode and this is absolutely the first episode of the inertia dialogues that are going to be brought to you from our stable of inertia asia's premier journal system energy park we started in 2007 and i have my colleague a prakash ayer i'm professor ayer editor and publisher of inertia and my executive publisher and editor prakash ayer today since we launched this in 2007 we have roughly seen the growth of both the power industry and uh, uh, also the problems that the power industry faced in a big way in this period and we have brought it to a situation where today inertia is not only a leader in India but also a leader in the Asian region in the area of power, energy and related infrastructure growth and as a, as a publishing brand, as a B2B brand, we have done justice to the effort that we put all these years and for this success I have a very special person today and that is Prakash Iyer who has been involved with this whole thing since its inception as the founder and as uh, the person who has been responsible for the research and other issues in the publication. So if you see the whole thing, the editorials that you get from us on a day-to-day -day basis is thanks to the effort that he and his team puts up on a daily basis. And he's a very specially able person. Uh, he's a very special person in the industry. As a, as a person who has had the challenge of a, of a, a physical uh, disablement in life very early on when he was barely six months old and uh, the complication which resulted in 100% debilitation of his lower limbs did not deter him from achieving the success in life and actually in achieving everything that a normal person would do and in fact I would say he has achieved much more than most of us would achieve with everything that we have. So with this, uh, I will begin the dialogue. Of course, you will know more about him through these energy dialogues, which we will continue to have on various issues of the country, which has been the vision with which energy has been working on the energy space. And we will also come in the infrastructure space with our other publication, Mark and Omni, where we are going to discuss what's happening to the various sectors of India, like ports, uh, like airports, like the road infrastructure, uh, even the ocean infrastructure and uh, also the infrastructure related to our urban development and uh, do we really need this urbanization or as famously we wrote in our book jointly India brandished the branding of a nation in 2003 we were a little bit averse to the model called Pura right yeah uh, that was uh, the great Abul Kalam wanted to uh, discuss Pura which is providing urban amenities in rural areas but we wanted to look at a little different objective because just providing amenities may not suffice although it may be a starting point with all due respect to Kalam sahab, you know Kalam sahab position was correct when he wrote about Pura because at that time the amenities were a question amenities would but we always felt amenities people would end up making the toilet and bathrooms and the rural infrastructure to growth will end there so we wanted something else so we wanted the entire economy to do a RLC what is the RLC? We are very clear. That is remote location of strategic and infrastructure. infrastructure and industry. And in fact, it's very interesting that uh, recently Narendra Modi called it rurbanization. So very, very, very similar models have come, you know, which was in our book in 2003. Mind it, my friends. You know, in 2004, Vajpayee unfortunately lost uh, his position after doing the first round of development and bringing the road infrastructure to the country. And his whole dream of networking the river uh, remained and has remained till now. And uh, that, in a very small uh, way, has been done by Gujarat. You know, so there are a lot of these kind of issues which we will bring through this program. And I just wanted to give a gist in a very brief introduction and say that here is Prakash, who has worked successfully through his, uh, you know, uh, physical challenges, and he has contributed throughout in media. And media must celebrate him because there will be no executive publisher in the country who would be in his position or who would have done all this and especially in a very very complex area of the economy called energy, power, infrastructure. That is the domain we are talking about. To discuss daily politics, to just get along with all those things without understanding the country is very easy. But to do all these things is a major challenge to understand subject, to understand domain. So what do you think about this first before we even start what we want to start today? You know? We are going to discuss very interesting issues but I want him to say a few words on this issue. Professor, you have been very kind uh, to me. Uh, you have uh, you 
apologize me, but I think that uh, whatever needed to be done was, you know, every individual strives hard to achieve excellence in his life. And I have strived hard to do justice to whatever I have tried to do in my life. And uh, there will be a lot of things like it is, uh, you know, in a way you can say that you will, uh, you know, do so many things. Others have to judge what you have done. I am happy that you appreciate what I have done. And I hope that everybody who come to uh, see my work understand what I have done and appreciate me. That is the objective with which uh, we continue to do and try working out everything in life. Yeah, well, very simple, you know. See, what happens See, the best way is to communicate. The medium is there. We as very young entrepreneurs, we had no money, right, when we started. And through the process of without money working, and even today we don't have a bank loan, right, when we operate. So these are the issues that I think most of the entrepreneurs will have to look at. So it's a question of entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs together at the top and a good team that works together. So I meant to say we need not be so, I would say, uh, yeah. you know, humble or anything. But the reality is uh, uh, small and medium enterprises have no scope in the economy. And in that no scope part, so many small and medium enterprises like us have been contributing to the economy and making it look good. The GDP has been expanding. And if you see the recent figure, there is the MSME that contributes about 85% to the Indian GDP and the top 15% uh, uh, cream, which is uh, the majority of the large industries have uh, contributed. It is not impacting the GDP at all as well as have been doing. So in that little thing, in that little big ocean, which you talk about as a GDP ocean, you know, which drives the Indian economy, a little bit of a work, a fluttering work, or a, I would say work that actually impacts, create ripples, you know, inertia has done those kind of things already, you know. It has created ripples, it has created a certain of ethics, and for this, definite credit must go to you as well, you know, because the team has been working, so that is my point. And it will happen to any kind of, I would say, publication if there is an ethic, where there is a commitment. Of course, we have to always keep in mind that whatever we do has to meet up to the, you know, challenges of uh, bringing about outcomes which are very good for the people, number one. Whatever you do has to be serving the public in a way and as uh, as a media is a very powerful medium where you have to you know think about how you can bring about outcomes that impact the people the yeah. question the question is the the question that you raised about is about uh, the support that uh, such kind of endeavors do not get overall they will never get i tell you with the current structure we all know that right so what we are talking about is there is a challenge there is a challenge and in the space where Media is also seen as commerce, if you understand me. There is a challenge to keep the ethics of media and keep its fourth e but don't keep fourth it. pillar. The students are each publisher and editor has to be responsible. You have to be unfortunately a benevolent, even if you call it a dictator, because you can do a lot of things. But basically, what I mean to say is when you're doing this, it is in public domain. In but how many media is doing that? That is exactly the question we have to today ask. Most media failed during the time we guys tried to do certain things. And not only we, a few of us did. You know, we can take a few names. Like, for example, your good friend who's on Twitter with you, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, money life person, what is her name? Suchetan Dalal. She must have done a good job. So we can take a few names like that. But these names are just about five or seven of us who would have done Otherwise, that. it is an uh, entrenched army, you can say. Absolutely. And, and there are people who have allegiances to different people. Yes. And uh, political class and they are working in the courts and Absolutely. a whole lot of things which, can, which has to be as a media ethics have to be brought to such an extent mm -hmm. uh, that media really becomes the fourth pillar of the world. Yeah, so whatever we plan that in the, in, the, in the spirit of democracy, we wanted this to be the balancing agent. Instead of that, what we have seen in our lifetime is instead of becoming balancing agent, they are creating their own uh, space where well, like uh, crony capitalism, there is a cronism in media almost. That again, it's a very interesting topic that I have uh, uh, raised up right now because corporates at the end of the day, you know, at, in the beginning of uh, the media, whether it is in India or anywhere else, always had that philanthropic kind of an approach whereby you used to support media and did not expect something to be given back to you by them. Right. But today what has happened is every corporate is expecting you to give back something. Right. That 
creates a channel. Exactly. So that means corporates look at media as a point of almost like a point of uh, communication where they want an advantage or they want to up their brands or take advantage of their branding, take advantage of the position, maybe written about, they must be written about and things like that keep coming. These pressures are always there. For example, everywhere. For example every media that supports you thinks that their point of view has to be amplified in the uh, publication or let us talk about the visual media. Right. And the question is how many editors are resisting this pressure? And, and uh, why we started this dialogue this way is interesting my friends. I want to tell you that this entire dialogue is like a precursor to what, whatever we said right now about media's failure. This we are giving today an open evidence to that situation. Prakash has actually done a wonderful breakthrough story for Inertia in January and it was this cover, the first cover, you know, and you see on the top is the sins of extension and this cover story of Inertia resulted in the resignation or I would say simply non-appointment or non-extension of two chairmen's position in the Public Enterprise Selection Board. They were the ONGC chairman, chairman. after our story came. The ONGC chairman had to go. Mr. Sudhir Vasudeva. Sudhir Vasudeva was gone. Because virtually um, uh, Mr. Moili was left alone by Prime Minister because Prime Minister's appointment committee uh, was not willing to give him the support that was uh, demanded. Right. And this story had enough evidence. And also Butola. Butola for sure. R.S. Butola of chair was going to get an extension as the chairman of IUCM. That also got, uh, I would say, cancelled literally because Moili bad rap. And the funny part is, uh, Times of India claimed, in fact, Arnab Goswami of Times now claimed that on his channel that he was doing, and you went on Twitter. Yes. Right? And this is our second issue, which does that. Tell right? you frankly, this story was in the domain. The second, Probably. our story was in domain. Watch what Prakash is saying. Our story was in domain. And these guys were knowing that the extension was going to be given. Exactly. But stories were being planted on the strength of leaks from the Prime Minister's office and the appointments committee of the cabinet which were selectively leaking documents to the newspapers. Exactly. And so, I would not like to take the names but ultimately there are all the publications going to town planting stories and you know behaving like an entrenched media whereby they were trying to amplify the voice of the powerful. But I would like to come back on that. Yeah. The work that you did and you exposed. You went on Twitter on that day when Times was running the story. And times ran away. Yeah. Arnab ran away. Arnab Goswami, claiming to be the best anchor of the country, ran away from the channel. Until date, they have not done any coverage. On the issue of what? On the issue of something that already happened. While we fought for the story, we got these chairmen's two appointments stopped because of the story that Inertia exposed that Inertia did. But till date, Mr. B. P. Rao, Chairman B. H. A. Whose appointment had happened much before we did the story in January because his appointment extension happened with the help of Praful Patel and the PMO officials. And the entire incriminating documents have been done in a third part story by Prakash. Watch this on our cover in March, Anusha cover. It completely exposes the kind of work that has been done, the kind of favor or I would say pliable appointments that has been done. And this is the Minister Praful Patel. Of the who belongs to the NCP in the UPA combined, and the uh, uh, I would say his secretary at the Ministry of Heavy Industries, his his definitely tacit involvement, and the PMO Prime Minister Office, including Kulak Chatterjee, all these people come under the fire, and also AK Sets, the Cabinet Secretary. Once he made BP Rao's appointment was not okay, and then then he doesn't okay later on. And uh, enough evidences are available in this. I am not good getting into the nitty gritties of the story because this is not about that because we have enough of this. This is available online on www.issueissuu.com forward slash inertia journal. So you can pick up these issues online as well. So And Professor, uh, I would say that all that is left in this story is for Mr. B. P. Rao to resign absolutely honorably. Absolutely. B. P. Rao B. H. L. must resign. Let us come to some facts. When he got the extension on the 31st of December, what happened to B. P. Rao? Has he not superannuated? He simply superannuated. He on the exactly same day? Of course. 
and the extension was given on the same on day. On the same day, the letters are released without even CVC clearance. Watch that. There was no CVC clearance. Look what Prakash is saying. There was no CVC clearance on 31st December for Mr. B. P. Rao. There was also a case of superannuation of Mr. B. P. Rao on that day. He had already crossed the age for any further appointments. He could only be appointed as an advisor to the BHL and no other way he could stay back and not especially he could never be the chairman and managing director of BHL again because the rules don't permit that under the DOPT. So the Public Enterprise Selection Board. Interestingly, is, Professor, these guys, you know, the government, that is this UPA government. The UPA tried, government, yes. Yeah, it tried to bring out a legislation whereby all the serving officers were to be, you know, their retirement ages were to be extended. But this legislation could not come through the parliament. When this could not come, they were taking the refuge of the Rumta Committee recommendations and selectively applying the uh, you know recommendations uh, made by uh, Rumta Committee and giving these extensions to the um, serving CMDs without following any procedures or any kind of system. Right. So now what has been done on a ad hoc basis? Yeah, yeah. I would like to come and then remind you because all this is in your story. What happens to the other gentleman, Prakash Chand, who is the real, who, who should have been the CMD of the company? He is given an extension, he is given an appointment in June 2013, literally. That is very, very... Unbelievable. And he is selected out of how many candidates? Out of 12 candidates, Mr. Prakash Chand was selected. Watch that. And BHL's the senior directors also attended the interview. Right. And out of uh, all these... Out of 12 candidates? Out of all these 12 candidates, this man is selected. Selected by PESB. PESB for his, you know, for all parameters. I would like to change that. He was not only selected, that is considered as a de facto de jure appointment as the next BHL chairman. Am I right, sir? Of course, he has been given an appointment letter as well. Absolutely. So these evidences are made available and we have and written. Subject to the condition that extension is not given to BP Rao. Right. Now, the what is this caveat? The, the caveat people have to understand now this is very clear that why this appointment will be done was investigated, right? 15 days before, BHL board passes an investment investment of roughly 2700 crores as far as our information goes, as far as market information. We need to check these figures, but we understand that 2700 crores Actually, of this, investment this entire has been passed by the BHL board under the chairmanship of BP Rao. Of course, this, you know, actually you have to understand the entire thing. Uh, you know, BP, uh, Prakash Chan, uh, this PESB had actually issued a notification for the vacancy. Right. And just one month before that, this Sakoli project. Sakoli is a place in, in, uh, in the near Bandara, in the Vidarbha district. Yeah, in Mahara. Absolutely. A project is given, sanctioned, funds are sanctioned, and all the entourage of the, you know, uh, ministers and shenanigans are involved there. Absolutely. And what happens after that? Now remember my friend. The parallel process is set in motion for extension. Even when a normal When procedure, already a chairman is appointed. Uh, the process is set in motion. Both the motion is set. The performer and one, performer two. We have all those documents. Two performers are sent. Very clearly apply to befuddle the, the man who is appointed, that is Prakash Chan, and ensure that injustice comes to him. It's almost like open injustice done to Prakash Chan, and isn't it? If, you know, even if he is get, uh, getting selected by the PESB, a parallel process has been set in motion to supersede everything. Then why PSB should exist? If the minister is going to have the say, That's why this farce? Question. Why this farce? Why that have the PSB? fundamental question. Watch, my friends, what we are saying here is, if the public enterprise selection boards uh, appoint candidates, and then later on the minister comes and says, give an extension or do or have my candidate. Then why have the Sharad? Then why have the Sharad, my friends? Why have the Sharad? Of course, so this is the expose that has come. And even today, mind it, in the name of elections, I must name this. We had gone with all these documents to India's top post channel CN and IBN. And I personally handed over them all the records. And it was handed over to none other than Mr. Radha Krishnan Nair. 
the director news and the, and those guys those johnnies they held it back they kept it behind until date they have failed to report and they simply told that this story for us is not critical at this point of time because we are bothered about the elections and remember in this the pmo is indicted in the story so that means you can know whose allegiance this channel has got if they make an answer like that and whose allegiance they are working on it's very clear their position is your agenda cannot be our agenda what is this agenda business why do media have agendas absolutely the fundamental question is why do medias have agendas and don't we ask the ownership of channels like cnbc cnbc cnn and ibn of course and the type of ownership they are owned by business house of we are course. not naming them but we are very clear of owned course. by business houses and they cannot compete with an inertia naturally yes because we they are no spy the wells they are no spy we dig the wells to drink water R remember they are not funded by anybody spineless media in this case we want to name the cnn and ibn as spineless media they refuse they have all my documents and i personally go on this the documents have been handed over to them fail to act fail to act in fact refuse to act and were blatant in that refusal to act the point is it is not a dog fight between media absolutely but it is a fight it is a fight between it is a matter of principle it is not it doesn't it, it doesn't it come to a fight between cottage media which is fair and not funded like us but you are a gate crasher boss we are a gate crasher of obviously and we would like to keep crashing the gates of these channels like cnn and ibn so where does that leave you that leaves us in fighting this media you are an un uninvited guest to a nice time that they are having yes and how can you participate in the buffet no no we don't want any buffets from them no problem no problem but i tell you should we have exposed this story we promised them we will expose you we got on video let them come to us we are very clear we are releasing this the story is open it is a case of cheating the country it's a case where a minister like prafulla patel is involved it is also the case where the pmo is indicted in fact pmo will have to go to prison if this case is totally over it involves a maharatna which is having ambitions of touching 1 lakh crore absolutely and if the nation is to fund such an organization we have to ask what kind of people should be leading it absolutely right if the media is not interested we have to question the media as well that is what we are doing exactly at anarchia we are questioning every media that fails to do this story and why is there always a vested interest involved for the media there is a vested interest because of which the story selection happens so you take sides they have taken sides and in fact forget about it they suppressed the key issues of the country and all of a sudden they were planting stories i am coming back to that they were planting stories that uh, mr uh, prakash ji does not have the board level experience a whole lot of hogwash was being carried in media and when we do a story but who funded it and uh, you know what uh, arnab goswami and times now do a bold face and try to hijack the issue just uh, you know try to say that i we got this uh, you know so they was break we got this breaking story uh, from where on earth and arsha got the breaking story times was nowhere in the picture and it was a story led by you remember my friends this story breakthrough story was led by prakash ayer with all documentation evidence and we were the ones who broke the story in january and media has failed we already have indicted two of them arnab goswami of times now and radha krishnan nair news director of cnn ibn after taking documents from me and he called me and took the documents failed to do even one story on this issue and under the garb of saying that he is busy with elections or whatever he is and he said this was not the priority so good if the nations somebody is looting the nation and a chairman is fudging the accounts today literally damaging the accounts of bhr when he should not be sitting there a man called bp rao does it and the media has no interest in this they let B, uh, bhr go out and there's a and there's an issue in this isn't bhr under serious trouble now of course it is a company that we love also and we have supported at anarsha for all this year are not we now criticizing because of what they have done in one year they are creating redundant facilities can you they are divert you know diverting from their core uh, businesses of operations absolutely they are doing all those things which they need, need not do yeah they are uh, you know trying to adjust the balance sheet of the government absolutely what happened to the 19 to 20000 crores of book value loss that they have got what 
Oh. They are not able to recover their outstandings. Absolutely. And we are conservative, 19,000. Media figures are 37,000 crores. We remember a story done by the Mint, which said 37,000 crores are outstanding in the market for VHS. So that is that. And we are only saying 19,000 crores. It says 37,000 crores are outstanding. So that's the kind of variation of figures that's coming. With 37,000 crores or 19,000 crores, we'll get, get somewhere in between. This range of outstanding of BHL, will BHL uh, uh, be a good company? Will it not go the Air India way, my friend? Of course. And up for sale? If they have done any dressing up of the accounts, truth will come out. Absolutely. And we are at the job. And we will bring it out. And we can assure you that we are going to be, after the story, continuously till we get to the fact, further facts of what all fudging has been done. And definitely we will not rest until, unless the injustice done to Prakash Chan and other directors on the board is stopped. Mr. B.P. Rao's appointment extension is an open injustice done and an open fraud committed on the nation. A fraud because ultimately a chairman who is not worthy of sitting there anymore without a CVC clearance. Remember, Prakash Chan had CVC clearance, of course. which we have published and I will show you those documents if you can pan the camera a little bit and I show these documents, it will be better because let the viewers know what type of exposure we did, you know, in this story. The, let's pan on the right page, you know, right hand side page, you know. So this is it and then we published all this. Can you imagine the uh, Sutanu Beheria, secretary at the Department of Heavy Industries, he clears the appointment in spite of no CVC clearance. Mind boggling. This is a letter of 31 12 2013. On the same day. On the same day. When mind boggling. When he was supposed to superannuate. 31 12 2013. On the same day. And somebody superannuating. There is an extension of one. Is this not called fly by night operation? Absolute fly by night operation, my friend. Sutanu Beheria. Remember, chief culprit here for doing this. The second one is another one from Sutanu Beheria. Uh, sorry, this was, I tell you, there was also Virendra Singh, Under Secretary in the Government of India, who is party to this, right? So his letter of 31-12-2013 is what we are talking about. Addressed to the Department of Heavy Industry, Sutanu Beharia. Sutanu Beharia writes on 2-12-2013. See, watch this. This letter is... This letter is of the Appointment Committee. It is of the Appointment Committee for Of sure. the Cabinet. Of the Cabinet. Yeah. And then the memorandum before that. 2-12, 2nd December. Even before he superannuates, everybody knows the he superannuates. The recommendation is coming clearly from the Ministry of Heavy Industries. And MHI, the Ministry of Heavy Industries, Sutanu Behoria, is the man who does that recommendation. So it is very clear that the Ministry is also indicated. Even otherwise, we have got certain documents whereby the Minister has explicitly said, no work towards the extension of... Right, we have enough documentary evidences towards this effect. Yes. And not only that, that... Prakash Chan's clearance was fine and clear was here, the evidence is here. He had the CVC clearance and the man who had the CVC clearance does not get the post. It is a man who is who supposed to be given an extension because it is favorable to the minister concerned and it is favorable to the PMO that this appointment goes through. And can you imagine this? Post our story of January because we could not catch this initially. We only caught the appointment scam after BP Rao's extension was given. But then the other two extensions were not given. So what happens? Is it not is it not the case that Mr. BP Rao should automatically resign? Of course. If Mr. ONGC chairman was not given extension, if uh, Butola IOCL was not given, how can his extension be valid now? It's a case, it's a case of criminality. It is a case of criminality of continuing with this extension and allowing this man to play with the accounts of BHL. Of course. Of course, this is a criminal act. And what, what purpose is serving? Shouldn't this criminal act result in uh, indictment of PMO, the MHI, and as well as Mr. B.P. Rao for a, now, this is a this is a conspiracy against the country. Now, Professor, PMO has done so many things. This is just one of them. This is another one. Mind boggling. And I tell you, my friends, on the 28th of February 2014, Prakash Ayer wrote to Pradeep Kumar the Chief Vigilance Commissioner of India asking, has he given a letter of clearance from the CVC in retrospect? Watch my words. If in retrospect anything is given, I tell you it is a criminal act by CVC itself. It's very clear. Vigilance Administration demands 
wide uh, guideline issued by Mr. Vittal in 1999. Yes. We are talking about 15 years ago. Absolutely. And vigilance administration demands all the board level appointees by the government, central government agencies or departments. Must or mandatorily get. Must, must mandatorily have the vigilance clearance. Without which an appointment cannot be done. It is illegal. Right. So, it, illegal act is committed without a CVC clearance. Of course. In this case. Watch that what he says. Illegal act committed without CVC clearance. The extension to BP Rao could never be given. Am I right? Of course. So that is a criminal act in itself. It's a, it, 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 they have to be prosecuted. All of these people and if CVC, I want to ask with all due honor to the CVC, I want to ask this question. The media is the fourth pillar and it must correct this. It must take the chance and take the, to the to the, to the the position of challenging. If CVC, we have asked the question and they have failed to reply till date, right? Okay. You sent a rejoinder recently and they have failed to reply. And I must tell you my friends, if they give any clearance in retrospect, CVC criminal case must be filed against the Chief Vigilance Commission. Am I right? Right. Is liable to be prosecuted. All that is left for BP Rao is to resign. That is the best outcome of this entire imbroglio, you have to say, imbroglio. But it is creating almost a constitutional crisis. It's, it's when well, the CVC gets into trouble. I, I would not call it a constitutional crisis in that sense, but uh, still I would demand that, uh, you know, for the better administration of the public sector undertakings, certain norms, inviolable norms are followed. But what happens to an institution like CVC? Now, the cloud comes on an institution like CVC that such appointment extension are being given on a constant basis. This is what we understand from our sources. Such clandestine acts are being committed at the CVC end. The, the, the million dollar question is, whether the governments of the day have the right to abuse institutions. But they are. They're blatant. It is very open now. They are blatant. If CVC has not done anything, they should have replied to the inertia letter and Falcon Media letter of 20th February 2014, which they have failed till date. Because in our letter, we were pretty clear that as on 31st January 2014, there was I am sorry, this was the circa 2014, not 2013, February 2014 letter. And 31st Jan 2014, till that day, BP Rao had not received any CVC clearance. Am I right, sir? Yeah, of course. And that was CVC's own reply to another person, whom we don't want to name here. And the record of that communication was available to us through the media domain. So under the circumstances, CVC had not issued clearance when they gave extension to BP Rao, am I right? So, now what is the way out? Prakash, what is the way out of this? <laughs> Number one, this is Somebody has to suck if he does not resign. These matters should not have come to this head. Right. Something which is, uh, you know, intrinsically not maintainable under law. So right. It never have been executed. But since the Prime Minister has done what it should not have done, Right. Now the only thing to be done is revoke that appointment. Right. But who will revoke? The PM is gone and there is a new Prime Minister by the time the government comes. You know, I tell you the wonderful part is, by the time the government comes, it will be already end of May. And June will start. And I tell you what a trick has been played. Prakash Chand's appointment will become, which Prakash Chand's appointment which was done since in last June 2013. By June 2014 that would collapse. So that means that open injustice is executed on Prakash sir. Am I right sir? Uh, I, I, I will find out, I think it uh, it's a matter of uh, investigation whether this will lapse or it remains valid for more than one year. No, it will not be valid for more than one year, I can tell you very openly. If an and this is the truth. If has to be done, then a serious injustice has been committed. It is an open injustice being committed on Prakash Chand. And interestingly, Professor, what they have done is... Prakash Chand, by the way, today Executive Director at BHL Haridwar, my friends. My viewers here, I must tell you, he remains an ED at Haridwar. And if all the cock and bull stories about uh, that uh, Prakash Chand did not have the caliber, then how can he run the biggest plant of the country of BHL at Haridwar? Haridwar facilities are the best but facilities of BHL. stories selectively planted. leaked and planted by, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's office, Ministry of Heavy Industries and some of the vested interests in the BHL. Contrary to what was being done even before the extension was being provided, they were going to the media saying that he is likely to be extended. Now imagine that 
after giving him everything, after having all clearances, appointing him, the public enterprise selection board appointing him and selecting him and giving him the next charge, right? After that, that paper remains there. It is treated like just a piece of whatever we call it, right? And the, the, the million dollar question is, media is doing speculative reporting. And, and no media has taken up this cause at all. Once he has been given an extension, I am saying visual media has completely failed. I must congratulate you on one more magazine, no bureaucracy today, which did some story. Of it course. was not uh, inertia alone. Of course, our, uh, our, I would say our publications are very different. Bureaucracy today looks at uh, the government issues and all those things. But we are looking at energy specific and power specific issues. And BHL is a darling company, which we at inertia consider to be one of the finest manufacturing companies in the world. And the same was the case with Air India once upon a time. And the same minister is involved. The minister who destroyed Air India is involved in destroying BHL today. And the, another breaking news is they have uh, given us a response to an RTI that they have secured substantial acres of land at throwaway value. Oh my God! Another breaking story. Prakash got through an RTI reply from BHL that for this Sakoli project they have something like 477 acres bought at roughly 50, 54 to 55 crores? Of course, 50, around 57 crores. Around 57 crores to be precise. So that's the type of throwaway price at which land has been taken. So is it that this land has been taken properly or this land is belonging to some people who have some vested interests and it's been taken and not only that. And professor, I want to ask you another question then. Uh, how do you justify an investment of 3000 crores? Nobody can justify. That is what my first question to you was. See. Today, for a PV fabrication plant, we don't need more than 100 crores of investment. So why this 2,700 crores? My friends, a matter of open investigation. Why 2,700 crores has been put? In between, stories were also being leaked that this uh, uh, facility will be assisting the 3G facility uh, for their boilers. But that is not true. Because this is a PV fabrication plant. Let us understand. And PV fabrication, my friends, is plain using steel and structurals. And it has nothing to do with actual solar photovoltaic technology. Because BHL has only 8 megawatt of solar photovoltaic manufacturing which is based in Bangalore. And that is too less for them to execute. They will connect this with a 4000 megawatt solar ultra mega project which they are doing in Rajasthan. But they can never execute it because uh, to execute a 4000 megawatt plant which should be done in the next, they put a 7 year path. That means in seven years, BHL will have a capacity and then they will execute it. That is the most silly project that you can talk about, you know, seven years path for a solar PV project. You know, solar PV project like, for example, the Charanka solar park. The first 215 megawatt came in barely one year. And so, just waiting to, for waiting for eternity to complete a project. It is never done. And therefore, why you are in a hurry to invest 2,700 crores? Okay, I also want to ask Prakash a question. You know, when BHL making 19,000 crores, how can it do such a big investment? That's a million dollars. Why don't we question this? When BHL's balance sheet does not allow them, they fail to uh, do any kind of uh, investment in any other small investment they are unable to do. How they have allocated 2,700 crores? And was this the same project that was uh, supposed to be uh, set up, that is this facility was supposed to be set up at Lato? I think so. When I think so. Mr. That must Pilar be investigated. Was the I think we must investigate everything. So, What's happening? So the locations keep changing according to the ministers? Absolutely. Everything. In fact, there is a much bigger case which will keep coming. In fact, in one of our other issues, we will talk about how CSR is being manipulated under the minister. But it is not the discussion today. But to that extent, the involvement of ministers in actually uh, creaming out or I would simply tell you skimming the, skimming the milk out of our PSUs they have des been destroying our PSUs and this minister Praful Patel has a dubious character because he destroyed Air India and he has have done everything to destroy BHL as well in his tenure and when he's going he is given a destroyed BHL to the country and what do you say about uh, you know the government eyeing the cash reserves of these companies. We do not know whether these cash reserves have been totally used in the elections. Has been BHL's position misused? Mr. Rao has been so pliable that what all he has done, he must not have he must not have the power to sign any document. 
But look at this, he was not even given the position of an acting chairman. But he was ensured that a position, full-fledged position of an extension is given to him so that BHL's cash can be used wherever it can be. And the elections are going on, we do not know unless we investigate what has happened. The decisions are made and what is the hurry to give an extension before elections? And then if you are superintended, the game was over. If they were already chairman, the question does not arise. So why this was done? So many chairmen have uh, retired in the past. And why extension is extended to the next government? The next government has no no reason to keep him. They will say you are superintended, you cannot remain. You have to talk about uh, <coughs> such star performers like Mr. Subir Raha. He was never provided any you know, extension. Many very star performers have not been provided extension in this country. And this includes R.S. Sharma, who is now in uh, Jindal, right? Of, he the was, of the NTPC. He was never provided. R.S. Sharma was not provided extension. No chairman of even the best company. Or even K. Ravi Kumar. Yes, K. Ravi Kumar was not provided. A, uh, he was only provided an interim extension for a few months. So, can you imagine one of the finest chairmen of BHL has not been provided extension? And I can also assure you that in old times, you must remember. Yogendra Prasad, he was never given an extension, he was simply shunted out of NHPC. So it's very clear, if, a, if there is no pliable boss of a PSU and the minister wants a pliable boss, he can go and do anything like a Casanova. And NHPC is uh, like a headless chicken for the last four or five years now? Absolutely. And, and all these companies, including NHPC, the power companies have been interfered in, fiddled with and destroyed. The only thing that has not been uh, fiddled with is NTPC and I don't know how long it will remain away from the minister's prying eyes and uh, I hope the next government does not do anything like this to our PSUs because they, this kind of destruction but of NTPC's PSUs. blood has been sucked by the minister, uh, you know, uh, in the reliance issue maybe they will be talking about that later. Yeah, NTPC 24 to 30,000 crores losses and that is also a cover story in our March issue on the reliance whether it was fair to give them the gas price rise, but that will become a part of our next episode. But right now, we, we are sticking to the BHL issue of the criminality in giving extension to BP Rao, where PMO and MHI stand indicted, and that is an inertia story, an exposed in the country, an inertia, your journal that has been committed to the nation and has been committed to the nation's energy, and power and infrastructure will continue to break through with such issues as the days come. And we must congratulate Prakash for this and my personal congratulations to you for Thank achieving our success. Us. And one last word, you know, on the on this BP Rao story. What are, what are the next things? What are the next steps to ensuring that correction factors is achieved? Professor, uh, for starters, uh, we are on the story. We are not going to stop. We are in the process of finding out a lot many truths which will bring so many things to light. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, Mr. B. P. Rao has to say, enough is enough, I have to resign. I have to pass on the mantle. But if he does not say that, which is black and which looks he like he's sticking to the chair, he has to be kicked out, absolutely right. And what Prakash says is he will be out, he will have to be kicked out if he does not go. And the new government, when it comes back, to restore the morale of an organization like BHEL, which is a premier equipment manufacturer for, for the power sector. It is important for you to take out Mr. B.P. Rao from the system and pass on the mantle to the person who is deserving, who is selected, and if no matter what, whoever takes the charge after Mr. B.P. Rao, Mr. B.P. Rao has got to go. He has got to go. And there are other guys who are capable no of the board and at the top is Prakash Chan. In the Organizations do not end with individuals. Absolutely. And we must do justice to a man called Prakash. If it goes, then Mr. B.P. Rao has done severe damage to the organization. He has already achieved the damage. He has done the damage. He has pushed a position where it's very clear that even if a public enterprise selection board is involved in a selection of a new candidate, I can go to the minister, call favors with him, do favors to him, and I can get my extension. That is the example Mr. B.P. Rao has said. And with this, so end uh, the uh, end this entire segment with a, a good saying. All those people who thought that the world is going to end after them are buried in their graves. Watch that.
and keep watching us. That was Prakash Ayer, executive publisher and editor of Inertia, and he is also the secretary and treasurer of the Inertia Foundation, who, and he is also the secretary general for the Renewable Energy Promotion Association. He was with me, and don't forget, it was Prakash Ayer and me who authored the famous book, India Brandish, The Branding of a Nation, which brought forward India as an econo economic brand in the world. In 2003-2004, we wrote that book, which was very popular, and it is a self-publishing book because we have not gone to a commercial angle of publishing, and we will bring the next, I would say, edition of the book, fourth edition of the book, shortly, with the changes in the current economic situation. With that promise, we say goodbye on this episode of the Inertia Dialogues with Prakash Ayer. Bye-bye for now, and see you again on this Enfra show in Enfra TV. In the meanwhile, Goodbye and good luck to all our readers and viewers of this particular show. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.